thank you everyone. So, as I said in the second email we sent, uh, this is a two-part series. Um, so today we're going to concentrate on kind of the very basics of Git. So it's for people who've never used it before uh, to show you what it can do for you and uh, which is the first thing you need to do, what it can do for you. And then after next week, we're going to look at uh, the collaborative side of things uh, on how to work with Git um, with other people. Okay, so I will start with sharing my screen and putting on the presentation after. Share. Okay, so you should see a nice presentation with Git introduction. So what is Git? Git is a software for version control. So what is the version control and why should you use it? So let's say you're working on a paper, let's say, with LaTeX or whatever you want. And when you're working on a paper, you do a first draft and then you might do a second draft and then you might do whatever and then you get people to review your paper and so on. And so what it often looks like with that version control is something like this. Um, you get a bunch of directories which you try to give some names that you're going to remember, but then you end up with like V2 and not really knowing in, in, in more what is what. Um, in this one, it's very really hard to know which one is the last version? Um, is it this one? Is it submitted v2? Is it final v2? Um, it's hard to know whether uh, which version contains the changes of which version. Um, you know, like you have the you have changes for Peter, changes from Sarah. Is that is that completely different versions or? So you end up with something that's very confusing. And what you get with version control is you get all these diff different versions that are recorded just as like, like this, but in a more organized way. So the basic of version control is to record your changes chronologically. So you know that new changes contain old changes, okay? It also allows you to, in some ways, remove all the erroneous changes. So you don't have to figure out what you have to do to remove it. You can just tell it, oh, I want to remove this and it will happen. You also can have several parallel versions um, that coexist. So for example, for codes, uh, if you want to test different IDs and you don't know which one you're going to keep, you can put each of them in its own different version. And then at the end, you can either remove what has failed, you can um, add a successful experiment to uh, the main version if you want to, or you can keep also keep a failed experiment aside, thinking, ah, oh, maybe I will have a new idea later on and I'll revisit it then. So it just allows you to, and all this will be very, very well clear on where you are at and each experiment and so on. So. Okay, and what I've done, what I haven't done here is that uh, because it allows for parallel versions to coexist, it also allows for very easy collaboration where everyone can see what has been done by someone else. Uh, but we're going to see that next week so that um, we'll, we'll see more of that. Okay, so why Git itself? Because it's really, really easy to set up. All you have to do is to install Git, which usually is very easy. You just go on the web and search for Git and it gives you an installer to install it uh, for your uh, operating system. After what is really nice to do is this. You know, you would want to give Git your name and your email address. It's not, it's not, you can use it, Git without that. But the thing is that it will, each time you record your changes, it will, 
use your name and the email you give it to to put it in the recording so that if you collaborate with others they know who done what and so that's nice to do and once you've done that you're done you're set up you can use start using git you don't need to have a server you don't need to set up anything complicated like that it's just install a software okay so let's start what is the, what does it look like at the start? So let's, we'll start here by just starting a Git a repository, let's call a repository, and see how we record the work as we go. So, oh, that's not what I'm, sorry. So now you should see a terminal, good. So in this terminal, if I do an ls, I have a project, a shopping project, because I'm very organized. I always keep track of my shopping project. <laughs> anyway, so in this shopping project, sorry, I already have a file there that already has things in it. So I've already started my project. And I've started my project and suddenly I'm thinking, ah, oh, I should really record the changes I make on this project in version control. The beauty of Git is that you can start your repository anytime. Um, the thing is that if you don't start it from the start, then you don't get a history of your changes before you start the repository, obviously, but you can just start it anytime and it works. So to start a repository, the simplest is to go in your directory you want your repository to live in, and you put git in it. And there's you initialized empty git repository in this place. And you see that it tells you it's your directory, and then after it does dot git. Yeah. So when you do in it, it actually creates this dot git directory right into your directory. So you records of your changes, your repository, all live together with your own work, okay? And that's why in Git Lingo, we call this a local repository. It's where it lives with your work. In this case, you see I'm on um, NCI, start my local machine, but this is still a local repository. It does, so local is, is a reference for Git. You know, it's where I'm working, I'm local. Okay, so I've started a repository. What happened now? I can check this, I can check what's in my repository with a command that's called git status. And what it tells me, it tells me no commits yet. So a commit in version control is the same thing as a record of a change. You know, when you commit your, your change, you'll commit your work. So I haven't commit anything yet. Untracked files. Untracked files are files that Git find in your directory tree, but that are unknown to Git yet. Yeah. So you can see I have a file in my shopping directory, but I haven't recorded it in Git yet. So it, it's untracked for Git. And you can see that often the Git comments give you some hint or are quite verbose and give you some hint of what you might want to do to, to use Git. Okay, so let's record the state of my work right now. So to record or to commit your, your work, it's a two-step two pro process. First, you have to add your work to a staging area that is a so-called index. And then you have to, as you do that with git add, or adding, and then you have to commit. The, so just to show you, if you do a git status now, after the git add, you see that the message has changed. Instead of having an untracked files, it says they have changes to be committed. That means that they are in the stage, staging area, okay? 
And this, the change to be committed is a new file. Okay. So now if I want to commit, I put git commit and I press return. And what happens here is that it will automatically open a text editor for me. I can choose which one I want, but here by default it will be a VI. And what it tells me, it tells me, please enter the commit message for your changes. Last starting with a dash will be ignored. There are just comments. And an empty message about the commit. So you, if you want to commit your work, you have to put a commit message. That's the thing. And you could put whatever. You could put commit one, commit two, commit three, if you want. Um, but that's not necessarily the best thing, because if you do that, after when you, if you need to review a bit what you've done with commit one, commit two, commit three, you really don't know exactly what you've done. So if you put a commit message that's a bit descriptive, it will be easier for you to find, uh, to review your, your work. Anyway, this is the initial state. So let's just put initial commit and save it. Save. So you save the file and then you quit the file and then I git will commit. Now it's time work. for an afternoon tea break. There is 20 minutes until oh, the next session sorry. starts. Whatever. So it's a good sorry. time to stretch and take a quick break from your computer or device. Feel free to grab a snack or drink and we'll see you back at 3.35 for the next session. Sorry. It was my computer talking to me. Um, Leave that. Okay. Okay, so here we've done the commit. It says there was one file change, transition, whatever. And so if I now do a git status to know the git the, the status of my directory, it tells me nothing to commit, working tree clean. So working tree is where you're working your directory tree and working tree clean means that what you have in your working tree is exactly the same thing as what you recorded last so you haven't made new changes since the last record or commit okay so now as i said the commit is a two-stage process so why have a two-stage process let's do another change to offer. And let's add some toilet paper. Okay. If I do a git status, it tells me now that I have changes not staged for commit. So as you see, because I've recorded, I've did a commit with shopping list before, it's recognized that shopping list is already recorded in a previous record. So it just tells me this file has been modified since the last uh, commit. It just tells me that I have some changes, but I haven't staged them. So if I stage them with git add, and then, I don't know, something happens. I realize I need to do another change, or there's a bug, or someone tells me something. And I go and change the shopping list again. And here I want to change the beans to be some jelly beans instead of the Betty Bots um, beans. Okay, but now I'm thinking, well, actually the toilet paper and jelly, the jelly beans don't really go together. They're really completely different part of things and I shouldn't really record them together. So if you look at git status, you see that Nash shopping list appear in two twice. You have shopping lists that appear in changes to be committed and shopping lists that appear in changes that are not staged for commit. So what happens is that I have added the toilet paper to the staging area, but the jelly beans change hasn't been staged yet. So now if I am to commit, I will only commit the toilet paper change and not the jelly beans change. So having a two-step um, process like this allows you to 
to be able to um, better manage what you comment together. So let's comment the toilet paper. So I told you if you put git commit, it will open a text editor and you put your um, commit message there. There's a shorthand for git commit. You can put git commit dash m for message and then you can enter your message there directly so that you don't have to go through the text editor to do it. Um, this is just a bit quicker. You see, you just does it, knows the, the message I want to give it. Okay. Uh, so now if I look at git status, you see, it still thinks that the file is modified because it only um, committed the toilet paper change and not the jelly beans change. So now if, if I want to commit the jelly bean change, there's another shorthand from commit. Because shopping list is a file, is a tracked file for git, instead of doing a git add and then a git commit, I can do both in the same command with a commit dash a for add, dash m for the message, and say not in for the word. Okay. So it's the same thing to do git add and git commit or after, but this can be shorter too to do and it's just one command instead of two if you need if you want. The only thing is that I git commit dash a will only add tracked files. Untracked files will not be added there. If you want to add an untracked file you really have to have use git add. Okay. So here you see I have my commit and if I do a git status working to clean, I have committed it on my changes. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation to um, summarize what we've seen so far. So we've seen quite a few different vocabulary words. Uh, commit is to record the state of your work, index, it's a staging area before the commit. Untracked file is a file that Git doesn't know about. Tracked files are the file that's already in a commit. And working tree is where you are working and where your current rep Git repository lives. And we've seen uh, a few um, Git commands. You've got Git init to start a repository. Git status to check for uncommitted changes. Git add and git commit with a shorthand with dash a and dash m. Okay, so these are typically the backbone of your version control. These are all the, all the commands you need to be able to record your work. And if you don't record your work, you can't use version control. So it's really the backbone is recording your work understanding how it works. So if you prefer a more visual approach to it, um, that's your command git add, git commit, git commit dash a, and you can see what they do. Um, git add can be used for um, adding untracked or tracked files to the staging area. Git commit will go from the staging area to local to the repository, so a commit and git commit that a just a short end to do two things as well. Okay, is there any questions so far? Okay. So, so far we've recorded changes, but in a sense we've been pretty blind. You know, we just remember in our head what each change is and um, we're just recording it, trusting we remember what, well. Um, the good thing is that Git can do a lot of that for us and we don't have to use our available memory for that. So let's look at what Git can do. And I like to think of that, that look back at the history, but it's just not just history, but it's part of it. So, 
Right? So we're here in our um, directory and repository. We know we've done some commits, but we want to know what we have committed so far. So there's a command that's called git log. It will give you a log of your commits. And it looks like this. The oldest commit is at the bottom. The newest commit is at the top. And for each commit, it has all this information. You have the author with the email. This obviously only happens if you've done the setup as explained before. You've got the date as the commit was done and you got your commit message. And in addition to that, you've got a line that's called commit with a thing there. That's called a hash. It's a commit ID. It's a unique identifier. And it's how Git knows which commit you refer to in some commands because some commands can work per commit or things like that. So it's, it's just a way to refer to a commit. So you have one commit there, you have the emergency supply here, and you have the initial commit there. And each have a different commit ID. Okay, now you're going to tell me this is good, but it only gives me the commit message. I don't really necessarily know exactly what I've done just from reading the message. So how do we know that? You can use git show and you give it a commit ID. You can simply copy paste the whole commit ID or you only need actually a certain length that, so that it's unique. Um, the length you need, it depends on how many commits you have in your um, repository, but usually six, eight is enough. Um, and so if I do git show on this commit, what, that, what happens? So it tells me again the summary what the commit was. And underneath, it show me a diff of what was before the commit and what was after the commit. So it tells me during the commit, the minus means this line was removed and I've added the jelly beans line. Okay, I've removed the Betty Bot's heavy flavor beans and I've added the jelly beans line. Um, you might say that I've only changed Betty Bot's heavy flavor for jelly, but Git works on lines. So I, if there's a, it will tell you there's one line removed and one line added, it's not part of line. Okay, so this is where I can do commit by, by commit and see what each commit has done, which is good when there's not enough, when there's not a lot of commits, but if you want to see everything that has been done between, I don't know, um, let's say you worked on something every day and you record it every day for a week and you want to see everything you've done for the last week, you know, you would want to see um, this difference over all the commits you've done for the week. So let's say you do a git log again. And now let's say, instead of saying what we've done in this commit, we want to see everything that's been done from after initial commit to now. You can use git diff. Okay. So if I use git diff, um, well, I guess. if I use git diff from this one, and just put one commit ID, it will give me all the changes that happen since this commit till now. As you can see, there is only one commit there, so it should only show me what has been done in the not in Harry Potter world. And sure enough, it shows me exactly the same thing as the git show for Harry Potter world, okay? Now you can use git diff with two commits to give it a start and an end point. So if I do git diff from the initial commit, Till this till oh if I do get diff from initial commit till now, you see it looks different. It tells me this is uh, 
Then we have added toilet paper and jelly beans, and we move the heavy flavor of beans. It takes, it, it, it shows you the, the contents, the merge change of two commits. Now, if I give a an and to the div, from the first one to the third one, it gives me the same thing because I don't have any changes currently. And if I just want to see what happened in emergency supply, for example, in this case, it's just toilet paper. So you can you can see a lot of different changes. Obviously, here we have a very short history, so there's not a lot of things we can see, but you can see how for a very long history it can um, really be useful to know what has been done for a set of comments. So now, um, is there any questions? No. So now, as I said before, you can, with, with um, git you can remove a commit and i just use quote for remove because you shouldn't actually remove a commit what you should do is call revert a commit so what you can tell git is to apply the reverse the reverse of a commit and because this has a new commit so that because you have the one commit and it's reverse you cancel the effect of the initial commit so if I don't want the toilet paper anymore, I can do git revert and I put the commit ID okay, and press enter. Okay, what happened there? It says error could not revert. But after it gives me a hint there, you know, after resolving the conflict, mark the correct path, whatever. So it tells me there are conflicts. So what are conflicts? Conflicts happen when you have changes at the same um, at the same line, and Git doesn't know what you want to do with these two changes. Do you want one of the change? Do you want a merge of the two changes? What do you want? So what do you do when you have conflicts? You do a Git status. And you see, you are, you here you get unmerged path. This means something with a um, conflict. And here it tells you where you have conflict. So you have conflicts in your shopping list uh, .txt file. So you open your file with a conflict. And here is what happens. So you have these strange lines with the here with head and the equals and parent of whatever, emergency supply. And between those lines, you see you have different uh, lines that were there before. So what it tells you is that in one version, the file has toilet paper and jelly beans, and in the other version, it only has Betty Bot's heavy flavor bits. And Git can't tell you wh which version you want to use. It lets you choose what you want to do. So when you have this, a conflict like that, all you need to do is get the file to look exactly what you want it to look like. So you don't want the special lines. And in our case, we don't want the toilet paper, but we want to keep the jelly beans and not the Bertie butts. So we remove all this, and that's how we want it. Okay, so now we save the file and quit. The thing is, nothing happened there. So if you look back at your um, status here, it tells you you are currently reverting commit whatever. So it tells you what you're doing. It knows you're in a revert and the revert has failed because of a conflict. And it tells you to continue your revert. You, do, you fix the conflicts and then run git revert continue. So let's see whether we fix the conflicts now. It doesn't seem to have changed because we have we didn't tell Git we have fixed the conflicts to to mark resolution as it says 
you do git add file to mac position so once you have saved your file in the way you want it you still have to add it to um to the to the staging area and you can okay and so now if i do a git status it tells me it's all committed it's all committed it's all a stage sorry and here's the message has changed it tells me all conflicts fixed and this so i just have to copy paste this if i want and i will have finished so it wants me to put a commit a message and it provides me a message um, because it was a revert which i can modify or i can accept as is uh, it doesn't matter so in this case i accept as is and now I have my commit done. So now if I look at my history, you see, I, have, I still have the emergency supply commit there, but now I have the reverse of the emergency supply commit, which means that the effect of emergency supply is not there anymore in my work. Okay. It for the um, that's it for the history. So what did we see so far? Very important is the commit ID or hash. You can call it hash as well. Use this commit ID as a reference to to tell Git what commit you want to to use. This link. Although you can use the commit ID, you can use a lot of other ways to refer to commits in Git. This link gives you a full details of all the ways you can refer to commit. Um, we'll, we'll share this presentation with you, so you'll, you'll, have, the, you'll have the link. Um, I'll encourage you to read through it afterwards so that you know uh, what's going on. And then we saw also revert, which is the applies the opposite of a commit to remove the effect of a commit. And this is all the um, comments we've seen, which are git log to list the history of commits, git show with a commit ID to show the changes introduced by a commit, git diff, uh, to see uh, the differences since the commit and different way of using git diff and git revert. Okay. Is, is there any questions on the history? Uh, hi, Claire. Yeah. Um, so you showed us a, a, a revert commit which uh, gave us a conflict which you resolved, but uh, can you give us an example of a reverse that doesn't lead to any conflict at all? Um, maybe. <laughs> Let's try. I think that if I revert the knot in a Harry Potter world, it won't uh, result in a conflict. Um, So I guess my question is to some extent, uh, what, 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 how do you, what why do you get a conflict? Yeah, yeah. What exactly can we, can we understand why, what, why is it going to give a conflict and yeah. when have, is it going to be avoided? You have a, con like you, you shouldn't necessarily strive to avoid conflicts. That's not like conflicts are relatively easy to solve in general, because you know what's, uh, what your work is about. Or you can ask someone if it's a change made by someone else, you can ask this person what they've done and discuss with them what should be done. But you have a conflict when two versions have changes at the same lines, which are different. So in the case here of the toilet paper, um, the problem with this one is that the toilet paper one was added when we add uh, milk, eggs, 
and Betty Bot's AB flavor beans. But then we changed the Betty Bot AB flavor beans for jelly beans. And um, this one had toilet paper and jelly beans. So, so now Git wasn't sure whether we wanted Betty, Betty Bot's AB flavor beans or jelly beans and what to do with the toilet paper, in fact. Because although here it says it added the toilet paper, um, Git doesn't read what you add or what, what the commit adds. It, it reads, it kind of, I mean, it does read what you add, but it works per line. It, it just says, oh, this line is different from this line. Um, and yeah, so, you know yourself, you can say, oh, we just want to remove the line toilet paper. But it's not the way Git will think, uh, if I can say think for a software. Um, it just says that, oh, I have this line to remove, but it, it, it turns out that this line is, is different, like the context of this line is different in here. Does that make sense? And oh, yeah, I think so, thank you. And that's why here I think it wouldn't create a, a, a conflict if I was to revert not in Harry Potter world because I have jelly beans here and I have jelly beans here and um, there's a toilet paper that might create an issue here, but normally it shouldn't. Okay, any other question? Yes, Diego? Hi, Claire. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. So uh, I was wondering um, that when we use the Git show, we can see, uh, for example, one of the version of, of our document with all the changes we have done, no? It's possible to, to see this document in its final version without looking these changes. Do you know what I mean? Um, so when I use Git show on a commit, it only gives me the changes for this special commit. It's not all the it's not all the changes on the documents. It just what has been changed for this commit. Okay. Yeah, but imagine that I want to see this document, but um, without uh, looking at the all the changes. I mean the plus and the minus signs. So and you all the things this information. I don't want this information. I only want the version that I had at that moment. That's what we're going to see right now. Ah, okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Yeah, because right now what we've seen is that um, if we look at a shopping list, very nice introduction, Diego, thank you. <laughs> if you look at shopping list, you have the vision of um, your project uh, as it is right now at the, at the top of your, of your uh, changes. And so what, what happens if you want to come back to this version, for example. So I'll go back to the presentation because I have a um, few things to. So to look at different versions, that's what you call branching. You need to do a branch. So let's go and explain a little bit what is a branch first, and then we'll go to see it in the repository. What is a branch? First, you have to remember, or you have to know, you are always on a branch or should be. Yeah, there are cases you can be off a branch. You try not to, try not to get there, especially if you're just starting with Git. Uh, you should really try to be on a branch. If you're not on a branch and you don't know what to do about it, just ask someone. It's not the end of the world, just um, ask someone uh, quickly. So since you're always on a branch, when you start a repository, Git creates a branch for you, and this branch is called master. This branch has nothing special. There's no master and slaves or whatever you want. It's just called master because they needed a, a, a default name. You can even rename the, the, this branch, um, but by default, it's a master. And branches allow you to, to be able to switch uh, very easily between versions of your code. You can easily switch between it. So let's say you have a repository here uh, that have a few commits and you're at the top of master there. 
And then you think, oh, I really would like to try this new thing, but I'm not sure where I'm going to get to with. But it's a big change. So you want to be able to record your changes at the same time, but you don't want to lose the reference of your working state right now at master. So for this, you create a branch and you give it a name. And then you do your records on this branch. So it will look something like that. You see, you have your master branch as still as I still at the top of the blue, um, of the orange line with the blue commits. And you have your feature one branch that is blue there that has added commits compared to um, your master version. So this way you have two versions. And you can see if you switch from feature one to master and master to feature one, you get to either of those versions. And what a branch allows you to is that you can add changes on either branch. So you could continue development on master while still having your feature one that is being developed and worked on. Okay. So in this case, you have two really two sets of um, changes that have nothing to do with each other. Here, that's a common history. Uh, both branch do everything from here to down. But this change is only on master. This change is only on the feature branch. And what Git allows you to do once you finish with your work and you're happy with it and you really want it in your main version of your um, work is that you can merge your feature into master. And the, your history will look like that. This commit will allow you to kind of merge all of these commits together and get a vision that has everything in. Okay, so let's see how you do that in practice because it's a lot easier in practice than explaining like that. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to our Git log. Uh, sorry, I've lost my, oh no, is it? I didn't lose, lose my mind. So let's say, let's say we really want to be in a wizard world. We don't want the version with not in with jelly beans. We want the version with Bertie Bot, uh, every flavor beans. So because here we said it's a commit where we did not in Harry Potter world, we know that this version is the last one that was in Harry Potter world. So we want to do a branch from there. So you copy the, your commit ID and to do a branch, you simply do git branch, you give it a name, in this case we're going to call it wizard, and potentially you give it a commit ID. So if you don't give it a commit ID, your branch is created from the top of your, um, of your record commits. If you give it a commit ID, it's created branching out from whatever commit you did. You, you put. It's the last common commit of your branches. Okay. So what happened now? Oh, I, I forgot to say something about the log. Now that we've seen branches, you see here, the green here, master, sorry, is the name of the branch. So now we have a green here that says wizard. Okay, it's the name of another branch. And here I see head and a narrow. That means that's where I'm at. That's the last commit of where I'm at. So I've created a branch wizard, but I'm still on the branch master. Okay, another way to know where on which branch you are, you can just tap git branch. I list you all your branches and it will show you the the branch on which you have with a little asterisk in front, so you know which branch you have. Okay, so we created a branch. How do I get to this branch? Well, I do a git checkout and the name of my branch. And then it gets without. And just to let you know when I'm going to use it, but just to let you know, there's also a shorthand 
between for creating a branch and switching to that branch right away is git checkout dash b uh, i don't know test um if i do that it will create a test branch where i am and it will check out to this branch it switched to a new branch test okay so let's go back to the previous branch wizard because it's the ones we want to use Okay, so now if I do a git log, it's completely different, you see? It only has an initial commit and emergency supply. It doesn't have all the other uh, modifications I've made. And if I look at my shopping list file, it's back to the version of the file I had after the commit uh, with emergency supply. Okay, so exactly what you wanted to know, Diego. That's how you get to another version of your code. And as you see, you can create your branch at any time. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to think forward as whether you're going to want to refer to this version later or not. You can, you can use your history to know, oh, now I really would like to review this version before and do your branch there. Um, okay. So now let's do a change on this wizard branch only. Let's go back to open this. What's the change I wanted to do? It's add some apples and some bread, I think. Yeah. Now let's commit this. Give commit dash a. I can use the dash a because shopping list is a tracked file, so it will add it and dash m um, add apples and bread okay so if i do a git log it tells me my wizard branch has advance of one commit uh you know that's now the last commit of the current branch and i've added add, uh, apples and bread okay so as you see, it's pretty much the same as um, before. Oh, uh, there's something I forgot to, to show you. So I will, what do I want to do? Uh, yeah. I wanted to show you something. So I will get check out test and do a, do a change there. Um, let's add some yogurt. Okay, what I wanted to show you is, so far, each time I commit, I just do a git status or git add and git checkout, git commit. And I just trust myself that I know what, I'm, what I commit. But sometimes you work and then you have to go home uh, before you can commit. And then you come back to this project a week later and you're like, what the last thing I've done? So if you want to know, so here I can do a git status and it tells me, oh, I have some modification I haven't recorded. What were these modifications? Here I can do a git diff. And here it tells me how my working tree is, has changed compared to the last commit I've done. So it tells me all these unstaged, uncommitted um, and unstaged um, differences are simply I've added some yogurt. Okay, so this is a easy way. If you want to review what you're going to commit before committing, you can do that. Uh, let's commit this to have something simple. Um, I'm not going to use it, but I just wanted to show you that. And then get, get back to wizard. I will remind you what we've done on wizard with the history. Okay. We went back to the emergency supply and added apples and bread. And then finally, now we've done our work and we think, oh, actually, I really want to be on the, on the real world, but I also want apples and bread on my real world. How do I get everything back together as I want? So you use what Git call a merge. And for this, you have to choose what you want to merge in what a bit. Although 
it doesn't really matter. Um, you can merge master into wizard or wizard into master. At the end, you end up with the same um, at the same point. So it doesn't really matter. But uh, let's go back to master. Say I want to merge my feature branch wizard into my master branch. And you do git merge and the name of the branch you want to merge now. And it's not very, it, it was bound to happen. There are some conflicts, obviously, because one has a petty bots and the toilet paper, there's one no toilet paper and so on. So again, to fix the conflicts, uh, you can do a git status to know what files have a conflict. And then you open each file one at a time and you fix the conflict in each file. So what do I want? I want to be in the real world. So I don't want Bertie Bot CV flavor beans. I really don't want the toilet paper. Um, I want the jelly beans and I'll, I can leave the file like this. So I can move apples um, under the jelly beans, even if there were before Bertie Bot beans before. Um, I can do whatever I want. I can move it back up if I want to, but it doesn't matter. I mean, if you have a code, obviously the order in which you do your code matters, but um, you, you, you're free to choose whatever you want it to look like. Okay. So you save and quit the file. And here again, it doesn't do anything, reminding you. You have to add the file um, to do this. If you know everything has been I fixed and everything. There's a shorthand I didn't show. Is git add dot. It will this will add everything in the current directory tree um, to the index, the staging area. Uh, so you feel free to use it, but feel, but be careful that it will add everything, including untracked files and like everything. So make sure you know what the status of everything is before using it. And you just, and then you, if, if you go back to the git status, again, git tells you what to do. It tells you all conflicts fixed, but you are still merging. Uh, and for, to finish a merge, you do a git commit. It's not like the revert where you have to do git revert continue. For a merge, you just do a git commit once everything is solved. So git is quite verbose. Make sure you read the messages because they can be useful. Um, oh, we're not do, going to do a dash M. And because it's a merge, um, git will come up with a message uh, by itself, which is merge branch wizard. And it gives you in comments that will not appear in the final message. What has been the conflict, what, uh, what had a conflict or not, um, and give you some details also. Okay, so you can just modify it, change it, or accept it as is, whatever. And if I look at my log now, you see I'm a master, and it, it has merged branch without. Okay. So master before was here at the revert emergency supply. And now it's up here with mesh branch wizard. And actually this, and this got, yeah. and wizard is still at the apples and bread. Uh, just to let you know. Okay. Uh, Claire? Yeah? I have a question. Yeah. Um, when you um, resolve these conflicts, mm -hmm. Um, I mean, if you have a file with thousands of lines, uh, then you have to do this manually? Uh, yes. So the thing is that if you have a file with a thousand lines, you probably didn't change 1000 line in both versions. Right. You're prob it's probably only like a few lines that you've changed in both versions. So each, each, each conflict will appear separately. So uh, it will 
tell you all the thousand lines are a conflict. It will, it will narrow to, uh, so some of the changes might go without conflicts and some will go with conflict. Okay. You, know, okay. you only have to change those that are conflict. So it might at the end only be maybe, if you really have a big file that has a lot of changes, you can end up with maybe 10 conflicts in a file, but that's very rare. I would say mostly you would get five, conf four or five conflicts at the most. Right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? Uh, yes, I have a question. Um, so if I switch branches without um, committing what I've done, um, is that going to erase all my work? No, not anymore. So um, I, it, it never did. Sorry. The old, the old um, behavior was to prevent you from switching branching. Branch, it was telling you, well, you have uncommitted stuff, I'm not switching. Now it will switch and it will keep your uncommitted work as uncommitted, which means that, well, let's do it. It will be easier with a, with a, okay, let's go. Uh, so I'm on which branch? I'm on master. Um, I can look at my shopping list file. That's what I have, eggs, milk, jelly beans, apples, bread, okay? Now, let's add bananas to it, okay? And I don't commit it, and now I go to, actually, let's not add to it right away. Uh, let's switch to a wizard. Oh, I'm going to have a problem there. I think, sorry. The, 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 what happens depend whether it's creating a conflict or not. So I'm, I'm trying to find a, the simple case and then show the complicated case after. Um, so if I'm on wizard, I am this. Um, I think I don't have any simple cases. It's okay. Let's try. Let's try like this. So, on wizard, on wizard right now, I have eggs, milk, apples, white paper, but if I go to, sorry, we are a bit out of time, so I'm trying to go fast to test. I have uh, the same thing with uh, the apples and bread and with yogurt added, okay? If now I'm, I'm adding bananas to my test branch and don't commit them, I will add bread and banana actually, it might help. Um, and I want to check out wizard, okay. Here, it doesn't like it because um, what I have in the wizard branch would create a conflict with what I have in the test branch. So it preventing me to do it, to, to swap. If, if what I have doesn't create a conflict, so if I was to do, so probably if I'm doing, sorry. Probably something like that would work. No, it won't work. Um, anyway, if I don't have a conflict, it will switch. But that means then your um, uncommitted changes, if you commit them, they will be committed on the new branch. So you have to make sure um, to be careful there. You know, It might be what you want. Maybe you started work and you're thinking, oh, I should have created a branch. Then you create your branch and you switch to your branch and then you commit on your new branch and that's great. Okay. You there just is, so there is a command git stash that basically temporarily puts the the changes that you've made into some sort of um yeah stash uh that allows you then to switch to switch to a different branch and then unpack this the the, the unpack the stash there again. 
and then commit it uh, on the other branch. That's what it says here. Please commit your changes or start them before you switch branches. So, yeah. But normally if you start working on something and you suddenly think, oh, I should have created a branch, just create your branch now and, and, and switch to your new branch and it will work. Um, in this case, it's work, it's easy. Okay, and I think that's all I wanted to discuss today. Um, here I have a few, all the comments and things. Uh, the other thing I wanted maybe to mention, if you allow me a bit of time, um, I personally almost never use the command lines for Git. I pretty much always use a graphic interface for Git because I find it a lot easier to understand because if you look at your, um, if you look at the log um, here, for example, if you look, if I look at the log, it doesn't tell me I have uncommitted changes. I have to do another comment to know that and everything. Whereas in, a, in the graphic interfaces, you have all this information in one place, and you don't need to. The graphic there are lots of graphic interfaces for Git. The one you use doesn't matter. Um, I personally switch now to using VS Code because it's a IDE at the same time, uh, integrated development environment. Uh, so I can code at the same time as doing my Git stuff, which is great. Uh, if you do a lot of Jupyter notebooks, you don't need that, but yeah. Um, at the same time, knowing the, the command line is easy because if you want to do it quickly, it can be quicker than graphic interface. Uh, so, sorry, Claire, uh, Claire uh, which um, I, um, graphic um, interface you use? What I'm using right now is VS Code, Visual Studio Code. It's developed by Microsoft, so it has lots of explanation on how to use and whatever. It connects to Gadi via SSH, so it's installed on my lo local computer, and I use it to develop on Gadi. Um, it integrates with Git. Um, you have to add a few extensions, maybe, to get it nice, and um, and it integrates with GitHub and Bitbucket uh, if you need to. So, uh, which we're going to discuss next week. But yeah. Right. right. Okay. Thanks. Um, I think that's it. <laughs>